All right, what is up traders? What's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We're going to break down a boil, of course, everyone's favorite natural gas stock or maybe you're not your favorite and some people are learning why they call it the widow maker. Uh, we've got a very exciting chart pattern here known as the inverse bump and run indicated by these two trend lines. I'm going to break that down in today's video. Uh, we're also going to break down UNG, of course, all right, and take a look at UNG as well. Uh, but we really need to zoom out and take a look at natural gas. There was a key psychological level, guys, and we broke through there. Uh, and, you know, that's what I was warning a lot of people about. And now we're going to look to see if there's any opportunities to potentially get back in. Now, this is the zoomed out monthly supply and demand zones, okay? Um, you know, at the end of the day, you want to get a good idea of the overall trends of things and the overall movements of things and not be focused so much on a day-to-day -day basis. This way, you guys will have a better understanding. Uh, so we're going to do, you know, multiple different time frames analysis so that you guys can understand what it is that we're looking at and some of the potential things to be worried about and some of the potential upside we have and prepare yourself for those scenarios. So this way, you're not caught off guard uh, by either move of direction. As always, though, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So be sure to read through the disclaimer. All right. Uh, I started a completely free newsletter as well for you guys. Okay. Giving out free, valuable finance content. Uh, try to sprinkle in one to two free trade ideas in there as well. I uh, put really high quality trade ideas and trade setups in that newsletter. Um, so if you're fans of free, valuable content, free trade ideas, you'll really enjoy it. You'll want to sign up for that using the link in the description. This was a trade idea highlighting a rising wedge, you know, going over where we could see, right, and, and describing it to you guys. You can see how that trade idea played out very nicely here. Um, so, you know, sign up for that using the link in the description. I am running a massive sale right now uh, for the Investment Intelligence Discord, okay? And so this is where you can get access to all of the trade ideas, not just one or two a week from the newsletter, but actually every chart, uh, all the different analysis and resources that I use are available to you guys in that Discord. And you can get in for a dollar, okay? For one simple dollar, you can get into the Investment Intelligence Discord where people are making over five figures on some of the different trade ideas in there. Okay. Um, all caps promo code black Friday. The sale is continuing past Friday and heading into Monday. Um, you know, basically going to extend it into cyber Monday and that will be the end. Okay. So for a simple dollar, you can join now let's get into the video. All right. We can see here European natural gas demand rises as winter arrives. Um, and this is something that they've been, you know, mentioning for a while and something that I've been, um, you know, keeping you guys up on, you know, really ever since spring, it was that it, this is basically what was forecasted. Uh, when it comes to uh, Europe and their natural gas, um, you know, situation that they had. Uh, but in the U.S., we really just saw a sharp decline in natural gas here recently. And if you take a look, all right, U.S. utilities recorded a loss of 7 billion cubic feet of gas in the storage during the week ended November 17th, 2023. This was defying market expectations of a 7 billion cubic feet increase. So they're expecting an increase and actually recorded a loss, right? That compares with a withdrawal of 60 billion cubic feet in the same last week uh, and a five-year average decline of 53 billion cubic feet. The decrease from last week was reduced stockpiles to 3,826, which stands 251 higher than the last year at this time and 249 above the five-year average. So basically, you know, it, it, that's what this chart is showing you guys right here, okay? And if you can't understand the chart, that's kind of why we just read through that. But you can see it actually came in here at negative seven uh, when it was actually supposed to, be, uh, you know, expected to be positive here. OK, positive seven. So, um, you know, that, that that was a little bit shocking to the natural gas um, you know, community. And we did see some prices fall. And I think that maybe this is one of the catalysts behind it. Um, natural gas price action is also largely factored and, you know, moves uh, with weather forecasts and weather expectations. So these are also things that you want to pay attention to whenever you're trading natural gas. Now, let's start off here with the natural gas futures, the Henry Hub natural gas futures weekly chart. And I mentioned that key psychological level. Well, what was that level, guys? It was $3, okay? Whenever we saw natural gas break $3 right over here, okay, um, you know, right here, that's when we saw a huge increase in demand, right? And price action obviously flows up with an increase in demand. And, you know, above that $3 level we mentioned is that that's where we really need to hold, okay? Because there's lots of traders who were waiting, right? And traders, we're talking about traders, remembers, that were looking and saying, hey, well, natural gas has strength above $3. 
I'm going to hop in the long trade and maybe they take some profits up here. But once it gets back below $3, it's very easy for $3 to be a key psychological level and for traders, uh, whether it's institution or retail to be like, OK, well, natural gas is under that $3 level. Um, you know, I'm not interested in going long. And we mentioned, you know, a couple of weeks ago how we were testing that level, guys. And it was very important that we really needed to hold it. And you see, we got a little bit of a dead cat bounce and we crushed below that level. And now we're trading at 285. So, um, you know, this is something that was really important. Ultimately, this still was a check, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, this trade did what we wanted it to do. Now, maybe it didn't go as high as we wanted, okay? But from a simple standpoint, right? You see old support, old support, right? This zone here should become new resistance, right? And so we were saying, hey, if we can break above $3, we're going to test that $350 to $4 range. And you can go back and watch the videos over the past, you know, basically like, you know, four, five, six months. Uh, and basically that's what we've been looking at for this setup with this triangle pattern was a breakout up to here. And we mentioned how there's going to be lots of resistance. Okay. Not only do we have, you know, this supply zone from 350 to $4, but you can see our 200 day weekly average or 200 weekly uh, moving average is also in here. And that's going to act as sharp resistance. Now, one thing that's nice is it is kind of in an uptrend here, right? It, it's very slight, but it still is in a little bit of an uptrend. Uh, if this thing starts to curl down, uh, that's not really going to be a good sign. They're going to indicate that, you know, natural gas is moving lower and it's going to be, um, you know, tailing and trailing basically as a constant resistance. Um, so that's basically it for the natural gas weekly chart. Okay. We're going to go over here to the monthly supply and demand zones. Um, and, you know, break down some simple concepts for you guys. Now, uh, these numbers here, this are the MCX futures. I like to, you know, look at these uh, whenever I do kind of the monthly charts here. And so you can see we established, you know, in the beginning, this long term demand zone, bounce back in that demand zone, shoot up, right, bounce back in that demand zone, shoot up, and we bounced back and we did a really good job in 2023. You can see that we tested and came down to this area many times in the year, right? This is the beginning of 2023, this line right here. And so this just shows that there was so much demand, really, really, really strong demand, lots of buyers coming in here and buying it up anytime because we haven't tested this zone for years, right, for a very long time. Um, you know, back here was the last time we tested that zone and we saw how it absolutely skyrocketed after coming down to those levels again. Um, now, in between these zones, this is what's known as no man's land, guys. OK, no man's land. And the reason it's called no man's land is because these are not areas typically where you want to enter uh, longer term swing positions right, or any type of swing positions. The reason being is because if you're entering in no man's land, um, the odds are not in your favor. Right. It can go up. Right. And you, let's say you're looking for a continuation to the upside. Well, look what happened here. If you went long here in no man's land, we've now completely reversed. Right. And so we mentioned, you know, um, in these zones, you want to see consolidation. Right. And this means that buyers and sellers are in agreement. And whenever they're not in agreement and there's an imbalance, that's what drives price up or down. Right. And so we know in the areas of demand that that imbalance tends to normally be a demand imbalance. OK, and buyers are going to push the price up higher. Uh, and then in the supply zones, we know that typically that imbalance is going to be on the supply side from sellers and typically will drive price down. Now, to break through these zones, we need to do exactly what we did in 2023 up here. Right. We came up and we consolidated. Right. We came up, absorbed some sell orders, came back down, came up, absorbed some sell orders, came back down, came up absorbed, absorbed, and price action was not getting past this level because of the agreement basically here with supply and demand. And ultimately, there was still more supply than there was demand, and we weren't able to break out eventually until we had this candle here where we can see, okay, well, now we've basically spent the entire year absorbing that overhead supply. And now the big question is, will, you know, the same supply that was here, those orders are gone, right? So, you know, the orders got filled here and now they're gone. They're no longer there. So the question is, you know, are they coming back in over here and replacing those sell orders? If they're not replacing supply, after supply gets diminished, you're going to break through, right? And that's exactly what we got. And so, you know, here you don't want to enter because this is not a major area of supply or demand. You don't really know, um, you know, where odds are going to take you, you know, what odds are in your favor. 
And we mentioned, you know, typically for this to continue up higher, what you would look for is a breakout retest, right? So retest of resistance, retest of supply as support and as demand, right? And so that's exactly what we're doing now. We're breaking out, we're retesting, and we're going to see if we can attempt to push up higher. But when we zoom in a little bit more now, after we looked at the monthly chart, we can see here, right, um, you know, and this is a four hour time frame. And so we can see we tagged that demand zone, right? And I'm looking for a five wave Elliott structure to the upside. Okay, now, if you're not too familiar, markets tend to move in three or five wave structures, right? And so your five wave is going to typically be the impulsive move that indicates the trend. And your three wave is typically going to be a correction. So, you know, we have wave one up here, wave two, wave three of five is typically the strongest and most impulsive wave. Um, and we talked about up here, you know, hey, don't be trying to go long up here in that no man's land, right? And so that also coincides with this Elliott wave where, hey, you know, now we're going to be starting to look for a wave four retracement. And that wave four retracement worked out very well, as, you know, also, right? You know, you have the area of demand where the um, potential impulsive wave starts, right? We break out above supply. We're coming back down now and we're retesting supply. So for us to get this wave five continuation to the upside, we really need to see buyers step in. We can see we have a long-term trend line that we've basically started in April, right? So this is April here. And you can see we've tagged it one, two, three, four, five, and potentially now a sixth time. Now, the thing to remember is that the more times you test a level, a trend line, or, you know, support resistance, the weaker it's going to get, right? And so we need to be cautious of us breaking through this level. If we do, uh, this blue arrow right here is highlighting a gap. So notice a gap on the futures chart here from all of these candlesticks right here, this empty space. These gaps, they tend to get filled about 90% of the time. Now, the big question is, when do these gaps fill? Sometimes these gaps fill in a single day. Sometimes they take weeks. Sometimes they take days, even years to fill. All right. And so you can see we actually do have a gap up to fill right here. So it is still possible we can rally. Uh, if you take a look, we had this huge gap down right here. And then you can see that that gap filled very quickly versus this gap is still remaining unfilled. So if we break through this trend line right here, it's very possible that we're going to come through and end up filling the rest of this gap. And at that point, the bulls would be looking for a gap fill reversal, right? Where we basically, you know, you can see here that the, the bottom of that gap fill is basically the very bottom of our demand zone, right? Our former demand zone in red, uh, our former supply zone in red, we're looking to see if we can shift it to demand now. And it's right there at the bottom of that. So even if we do break this trend line and come down and tag here, that sets up something known as a look below and fail, okay? Where... You know, essentially on the breakdown, you know, sellers would come in with a retest and push lower, right? And this gives you confirmation of a break of the trend line. Breakdown, retest, push lower. All right. That is a green light for sellers and shows you guys that, hey, sellers are in control and attempting to do a very textbook break and retest. All right. But if they break below, OK, and we actually get back above within this range, it's going to be a look below and fail. And that's actually a bullish signal because, again, here, sellers have the full opportunity to show that, hey, we're in control. We're going to take advantage of this retest and push lower. And if they don't do that, it means that sellers are absent right here. Right. And if sellers are absent right here, it shows that demand's in control and we're actually going to push further back up with, within that range. So. You know, we really need to pay attention right now uh, over the coming you know week. Uh, we should see a little bit of clarity. Now, it's very possible we could just chop around in here and not get any clarity, um, you know, but look for that potential gap fill. OK, and look to see if we do break this trend line here. Are we going to get a retest and a push lower uh, or, you know, are we going to bounce off of here, uh, push up higher or potentially even get that look below and fail? and push back up higher again, right? So we've looked at a weekly, a monthly, a four hour chart. Now you guys have a really good idea, okay? Or it should have a much better idea of, you know, the price action and how things are moving. Um, this is going to be Boyle right here, the Boyle daily chart, okay? Uh, now we talked about, you know, one of my favorite chart patterns, this inverse bump and run. Uh, if you're not too familiar with it, it's very simple to identify. Uh, you simply look for a prevailing trend, right? So here we have a prevailing downtrend indicated by this trend line right here, right? You can see we're tagging this, tagging this, um, and, you know, that's our prevailing downtrend. And then we get this aggressive bump down in price indicated by this trend line that we've tested once, twice, three, almost four times now. Right. And so this is your bump and the break of this trend line in a perfect world scenario would do something like this. 
right? And actually break up to where the pattern began back in our overhead supply zone within that 76 to $80 region. Okay, so that is basically your best case scenario for Boyle right now, okay? And, you know, so that's what I would look for, okay? Um, the thing that has me a little bit worried is this, right? You can see that we basically have been trading in a range, right? Boyle has been range bound for pretty much the entire year since March, April. It's gone completely sideways and, you know, uh, established demand down here, established supply up here. And it was, the big question was, you know, what's going to break first? Was it going to be supply uh, or was it going to be demand? And we clearly broke through that demand. So now we have to worry a little bit. If we come back up, will it just be a retest of that former demand and turn it into supply and potentially head down lower. If we do, it's very possible Boyle can come all the way back down to $28. Okay. So you need to have, you know, your realistic expectations about things and you need to be prepared for these different scenarios, right? This is why I'm trying to go over these things with you guys. All right. Um, you know, but in the bullish, the best case scenario here is, hey, this is a uh, inverse bump and run. We're going to break this trend line and we're going to, you know, potentially retest that 76 to 80 dollar region. It's just that there's a lot of things that need to go right for that to happen. And, uh, you know, a little bit less needs to go right for the break and retest and continuation lower to happen. Right. Um, now we talk about gaps, right? In blue here, I have some gaps highlighted, right? Boyle has a nice gap up here, uh, right around 65, 66. It's got another gap here, right around 59, 60. Uh, so that's two potential gaps that we could see fill on Boyle. It has no gaps to the downside. Uh, and do you guys know why, right? Comment down below if you know why Boyle has no um, gaps to the downside to fill. Well, gave you a couple seconds. The answer is because Boyle's making all-time lows, right? And so uh, there's lots of reasons why something like UNG, um, I'm sorry, not UNG, but why the natural gas futures are ticking up, all right? And we see that they've actually been in a bullish trend since April uh, versus, you know, something like Boyle. You know, if we just go and take a look back a couple slides, we can see here, this was April for the futures, and you can see it's clearly in an uptrend. Then we come back to Boyle, and it's in a downtrend here, uh, you know, making new lows. Uh, the reason is uh, there's actually multiple reasons, okay? And I'm not going to spend too much time on that. That's uh, a subject for another video. I've actually got an entirely dedicated video uh, to all of the myths uh, surrounding, you know, basically the decay associated with Boyle, also UNG, okay? They both suffer from, um, you know, two forms of decay. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't make money, right? There's obviously time periods here. You know, you see if you buy in here and you sell up here, obviously you're making money. Um, but when you try to hold on to this thing for too long and you're not aware of the contango, of uh, the volatility decay and different things like that, uh, this is how you can get burned, right? If you've been holding since April, you can see boil again, it's going down, right? Meanwhile, we had the futures actually going up, right? So uh, there are some risks you want to be aware of. Um, I do coaching sessions actually all the time. Uh, there's a lot of people that hit me up, uh, you know, in regards to boil. Okay. I do these one-on-one -on -one sessions every single week. Uh, you can book them directly through my Ko-Fi page using the link in the description. You click on the commissions tab and in here you can book a 30 minute or one hour session. Um, and we can go over whatever it is you want. We can go over option strategy, how to use and basically leverage the shares that you own, uh, to hedge yourself, um, you know, accordingly, right? So this way, uh, you're not just watching your position go down negative 50%, negative 60, 70, 80%. Um, you know, there's people, you know, I've talked to people who've lost lots and lots of money on boil and, you know, we're working on uh, fixing those mistakes, right? Um, because ultimately you need to have a plan heading into something. And oftentimes people think they have a plan and then uh, they don't stick to the plan and don't cut their losses or they continue to average down and average down. That seems to be the big mistake that I've seen is people just continuously buy, 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 buy uh, the whole way down and they never sell on the way up. Um, you know, maybe because it's, you still have to sell for a little bit of a loss, um, you know, but Anyways, enough on that. We'll go ahead and break down UNG. Okay, this is the, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, boil but not leveraged, right? And so we can see here again that UNG is also making new lows, right? Very clearly, um, you know, you take a look and the trend is down. Again, 
we already talked about how there's different factors. So keep these things in mind whenever you try to trade things like UNG or Boyle. Now, I do want to highlight a simple strategy for you guys. And one of um, you know the simple strategies that I've used and you know one of the things that I look for when it comes to entries and exits for trading natural gas, um, it's going to be bullish divergence, okay? If, if that sounds super complicated, it's actually very, very simple, right? And I've got, I've shown it before in the past, but we're going to revisit this because we're here at this point where we've got bullish divergence right now. So what is bullish divergence, Zach? Well, take a look at this circle here and the circle here, we're making lower lows, right? Very simple concept, lower lows, higher lows, higher highs, lower highs. These are simple concepts in the stock market and in trading you need to learn, right? So low and a lower low. Well, if we look at our RSI, remember, this is a leading indicator. So it's going to tell you potentially what can happen in the future versus your MACD is something more of a lagging indicator. It's going to tell you what's already happened. If you take a look, we got this bearish MACD crossover right here. It's a lagging indicator. You can see this is actually where it bottomed out at, right? And the reason being is because it's telling you about the sell-off after the sell-off has already happened. Whereas using the RSI as a leading indicator, we have the low here, we have the lower low. Take a look at what we got. We have a low, and then we actually have a higher low. So we're increasing in relative strength as price action is going lower, making higher lows on the RSI. And this is a potential bullish signal. That's why they call it bullish divergence in this case. You can see that that was a really good trade entry and the stock ran up 40%, right? Now, that doesn't mean that I continued doing that forever. In fact, it came down and made lower lows again. And well, what do we do at this point? Well, we create another higher low, right? And so you can see here, it ran up almost 17%. And then we come back down again, make new lower lows, continuing to make higher lows on the RSI, a 26% rally after that. So, you know, if we take a look at what's happening now on a larger scale, right, on a larger basis, lows, lows, higher lows, lower lows, right? So lows, lower lows, lows, higher lows. This makes for a really interesting dynamic at the point. Basically, 581 is the lows right here on UNG. And it's very possible with this bullish divergence, we could see a rally. Remember, it's a leading indicator. Now, UNG has three gaps up to fill versus Boyle that has two. Uh, Boyle has a little bit more of a bullish chart pattern with that inverse bump and run and has those two nice gaps up to fill. OK, uh, and then if we take a look here back at the four hour time frame, we're also approaching this trend line. So uh, for me, this sets up a really good uh, risk to reward ratio right here. So, you know, if the futures break through this trend line, right, if we break, retest, push lower, uh, then that's going to be a clear sign. You know, if you go long, right, that, hey, things are potentially going to go lower. Cut your loss, take your loss, accept it, because every trader always takes a loss. There's no trader that's never taken a loss. What makes a successful trader is taking losses as well, right, and taking smart losses. And so that's for the futures right here. And if we come back and revisit UNG, we also see a similar setup, except this time it's on the RSI. So if we can bounce and continue to stay above here, right, and, and, and you know, most likely that would coincide with the natural gas futures bouncing off of their trend line. Um, then, you know, we have a good risk to reward setup, right? Where we can set, you know, a stop loss shortly below, okay? And look to capitalize off of, you know, potentially one, two, or three of these gaps, uh, depending on which one of the charts you want to play, okay? And if we break through this bullish divergence trend line, okay, most likely that's going to mean we're going to break through 581 and there's no support down below. Again, because this, these things are making new all-time lows. So there's no support down below for us to potentially come back down to and, and find demand. We have no idea where support is going to be found to the downside, right? So, um, you know, that's basically it for today's video. It was pretty in-depth, a little bit longer than usual, but hopefully you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to sign up for the newsletter, okay? I put out really, really good trade ideas for these uh, for you guys. Okay. Uh, really good free viable finance content as well. So it's not just trade ideas, but other useful information, especially if you know, you're interested, um, you know, in trading and finance and different things like that, you really enjoy it. Use the link in the description and sign up for the discord while you can. Okay. The investment intelligence discord promo code black Friday will get you in for just a dollar. So basically giving it away for free. Okay. You guys can get in for that first month.
see if you like it. Okay. Uh, there's lots of trade ideas, lots of resources, um, you know, and you guys basically get all of my market breadth instruments, um, you know, and, and there's lots of big winners in there, lots of big trades. You know, this is my trade on CCL right here. Uh, did very, very well with the Carnival Cruise Line. Right. Um, and we also traded natural gas here recently uh, within the last week or two. Now, it was a very short uh, trade. I think it was like a one or two sw day swing trade. Um, but, you know, we, we got out with small profits because things weren't looking good and it looked like the play was going to reverse on us. So uh, rather than letting a winner go red, what we did was we went ahead and just took those small profits that we could, got out of the play. And now we're looking for new potential setups uh, when it comes to natural gas.